Hi and welcome to Play Hooky with me. My name is Roz and in today's video I'm going to be sharing how to make this absolutely adorable ridged ripple stitch. This is hands down one of the easiest ripples that you can make which makes it ideal for beginners or if you're looking for something that whips up quickly and is easy to memorize. What makes this so easy is that it's a one row repeat and we're only going to be working with double crochets to build our ripples. So first we'll go through the step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do the stitch and then at the end of the video I'll share how to straighten the edges if you don't want to have the ripples on the sides. If you want to recreate the look that you see here, I did each color for two rows, but you can have a lot of fun with this and do any kind of variation that you like. And if you really don't like working with a lot of colors and all the tails that come along with that, then I would recommend that you get a nice variegated yarn because that will look beautiful with this stitch. For this tutorial, I am using a cotton weight four yarn with a 4.5 millimeter hook. To begin, add a slip knot to your hook. And you want to create a chain with a multiple of 12, meaning you're going to go 12, 12, 12 until you reach the width that you want to make. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 11 and 12. And I would recommend as you're working along to add a stitch marker in the 12th chain. This is really going to help you stay on track and help you keep your count. Once you've created all of your chains, add three more, one, two, three, for your turning chain. To begin row one, we're going to do a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, one, two, three, four. And that first chain three is going to serve as your first double crochet. And essentially here on the side, we're doing two double crochets into the same stitch. And we're going to do the same thing at the very end of the row. Now it's time to start our sequence and we're going to begin with our first side. And the magic number that you want to remember for your sides is the number three. So we're going to do a double crochet into the next three chains. So. One, two, three. And now we're going to do our very first dip. We're going downwards. To create our dip, we're going to be working into the next four stitches and essentially we're doing a decrease. So we're going to take these next four stitches and turn them into two. To do that, we're going to do two double crochets together twice. So we're just going to yarn over, working into that next stitch, pull your yarn through, yarn over and pull through two. Instead of completing that double crochet, we're going to start again in the next stitch, yarn over, Go in, pull your yarn through, yarn over, pull through two, and you should see three loops on your hook. And we have two double crochets that are halfway completed. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. And you've just completed your decrease or your two double crochets together. We're going to do that one more time. Yarn over, going into the next stitch, Pull the yarn through, yarn over, pull through two, repeat it, yarn over, going into the next stitch, pull your yarn through, yarn over, pull through two, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And so there we've just completed our dip. We've taken those four stitches and turned them into two and we're ready to work on our next side. To do our side, it's three double crochets, one in the next three stitches, double crochet, one, two, and three. 
If you use a stitch marker when you created your chains, this is really useful to keep on track. At this point, you should see a stitch right before that stitch marker. So two stitches remaining here. And this also means that we're going to create our very first peak. And to do our peak, instead of doing a decrease, we're going to be doing an increase. So we're going to take these two stitches and turn them into four. So we're just going to do two double crochets into the next stitch. One, two, and in that next stitch, we're going to do that one more time. Two double crochets into that stitch. One, and two. And now we're ready to move our way back down. So we're doing three double crochets, one in each stitch. One, two, three, and we are back to a dip, which just means that we're going to do two double crochets together twice, working into these next four stitches, yarn over, going into the stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, working into the next stitch, yarn over, go in, pull your yarn through, Yarn over, pull through two, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three. There's our first decrease. Let's do that one more time. Yarn over, going into the next stitch, pull the yarn through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, going into the next stitch, pull the yarn through, Yarn over, pull through two, three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. And there's our dip completed. And what's the magic number for the side? And that's right, three. So let's do three double crochets. One, two, and three. And if we're on track, we should see two stitches with that stitch marker, one, two, we're good to go. And this also means that we're back to a peak and we're just taking these two stitches and turning them into four by doing an increase twice. So we're going to do two double crochets into the next stitch. One, two, another increase in that next stitch. One, two, awesome. And now we have just completed our peak, so it's time to do another side, work our way back down. That's three doubles, one, two, and three. And that also means it's time to do another dip. And just a little note here, we're always going to be beginning and ending our rows with a dip. I'm at the end of my row here, so let's finish our last dip. That's two double crochets together twice. Going into that next stitch, pull through two, Pull through two. There's one. We need to do it again in the next two stitches. And when you come to the end, you should see four remaining stitches. One, two, three, four. We're going to do our side three double crochets, one, two, 
three. And just like we did in the beginning, we had two double crochets in one stitch. That's how we're going to end this row. Two double crochets into the same stitch. Perfect. To begin row two, we're just going to chain three. That's going to serve as our first double crochet and turn. And we want to create those two doubles on the side. We've already created our first one with the chain, working into the stitch right under it, create a double crochet. And now we're ready for the sequence. And it's exactly the same as before. It's the same thing. We're starting with three on the side, followed by a dip. Now the only difference is that instead of working into both of the stitches, we're going to work into the back loop only. To find your back loop, just pull your work to the front and you're looking for this V shape and you just want to work into the backs. This is what's going to give you that really beautiful ridge effect. Now, if you just work into the front of these loops as normal, you'll still have a beautiful ripple effect. You just won't have that ridge. Now you'll notice here that I didn't work into the back loop only for the sides, and that's because it's really not necessary. You're not going to see it. If you want to work into the back loop only, you can, but again, I don't think you're going to really notice a difference. So I just don't bother on the sides. So we're going to begin with three doubles. Working into the back loop only. One. Two. Three. So now we're ready for our first dip. Two doubles together. So working into that stitch, pull the yarn through. Pull through two, working into the next stitch, pull, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all three. There's one completed. We need to do it one more time. Yarn over, going into the stitch, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, going into the next stitch, pull the yarn through, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all three, and that's our dip completed. Now at this point, I would recommend that you grab a couple of stitch markers, one in each color. This really helped me to stay on track for these first couple of rows. So I'm going to use this green to be my dip, and it doesn't have to be in an exact stitch, just there to help you see where that dip is. And then I'm going to use this lavender one to represent my peaks. I really found that it helped me to stay on track as I was learning this stitch. And also at the beginning, it's kind of hard to see the dips and the peaks really easily. But after you've done a few rows of this, you won't even need your stitch marker. It'll be really easy to remember. So we just did our dip. It's time to do our three doubles. Remember, we're just working into the back loop. One, two, three. We're back to our peak. So that's just an increase into the next two stitches. So two doubles. In that same stitch, working into the next stitch, two doubles. We're back to our side, three doubles. And we are back to our dip. So that's two doubles together twice. There's one. Two. We're back to a side, 
three doubles. One, two, three. Peak, that's an increase in the next two stitches. That's one increase. Our second increase, and that's our peak completed. Back to a side, three doubles. And you'll just continue this all the way across. And when you reach the end, you will be back to a dip. So that's two doubles together twice. with lots of cat hair involved. And when you reach the end, again, you should see four stitches remaining. The one at the very end is a little hard to see, but it is there. One, two, three, four. So we need to complete our three doubles for the side. And now we need to complete the row with our two double crochets into the same stitch. So we're just going to work into it. One and two. After working two rows in the same color, this is where I like to change colors. So I'll just show you quickly how I like to change color. Before you actually finish that last double crochet, you're going to complete it with your next color. So you should have two loops on your hook. Bring in your next color and just pull it through those two loops. And that's all there is to it. You've just completed that last stitch and added your new color. And what I like to do is just tie these two ends together to just hold it in place. You can absolutely double knot it if you like. I like to stay away from that just in case I've done something wrong and I need to pull everything back out. It's just easier to deal with one tie instead of a double knot. Chain three and turn. Add a double crochet into the top of that stitch right below that chain. And now you're just going to continue on with the sequence just like before. You're going to be working into the back loop only to complete your stitches. So let's start with this side where we do a dip first. So we want to focus on the number 12. We're going to be working 12 stitches, just like the multiple that we used in the beginning. So we're going to be filling in these gaps with single crochets, half doubles, and double crochets. So if you look here at our first 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's our 12 stitches. Add a slip knot. And going into that very first stitch, add a single crochet. So the sequence we're going to be using here that I found worked the best was two single crochets, three half doubles, two doubles, moving our way back up, three half doubles, and then finishing with two singles. So we just completed our first single. Let's do another in the next stitch. Single. Now three half double crochets, one, two, three. We're in the dip where our two double crochets together were, and we're going to do two double crochets, one and two. Now we're moving our way back up, three half doubles, one, two, three. 
After our three half double crochets, we need to finish with two singles to complete that first sequence. And that's one gap filled. And you're just going to continue that sequence all the way across to straighten out the whole edge. Starting again, two singles, three half doubles, One way to stay on track is just to make sure that you're working into the two double crochets together. There's one and there's the other. I'm doing a double crochet into each one of those. So that will match up. If that doesn't match up, then you need to backtrack and recount. Okay, and three half doubles. And two singles and start over. So on this side where we're starting quite low and we're working towards the peak, we're doing the same sequence but we're starting with a double crochet instead. So we want to start right here at the top of this stitch to begin our sequence. Now if you're having a hard time figuring out where to go, just look for your two double crochets together and just know that these are the two areas that you'll want double crochets. So then you can kind of backtrack with the sequence to make sure that you start in the right place. So I'm starting in this stitch right here, fastening on. I'm going to chain two. You can chain two or three to serve as your first double crochet. I find that the three is a bit too gappy, so I stick to two. Now work your next double crochet. In your mind, just imagine that you are doing or completing a dip. And now we're working our way back up with that very same sequence. Three half doubles. One, two, three. Okay, two singles. One, and two. And now we're just going to continue the sequence all the way across, just like we were doing before. Two singles. That's Loki having a drink in the background. Three half doubles. One. Two. Three. Two doubles, having a big drink. And now working our way back up, three half doubles, one, two, three, now two singles. Now you're just going to continue this all the way across. Just follow that same sequence and you'll be finishing with two double crochets. I think this is my favorite right now for the ones that I've shown on the channel, but if you haven't seen those yet, I do have a playlist that I'll go ahead and link here so you can decide which one you like best. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.